So now we're going to talk about measuring attitudes, opinions, and scales. So an attitude is different than an opinion. An attitude is, is really just someone's predisposition towards an object or people or organizations and so on. Um, it usually has many attributes. Um, the attitude requires multiple measurements to gather any information on their true feelings. So you have to ask many questions in order to truly understand what their attitude is about that particular uh, group of people or organization. And uh, usually scales are used to measure attitudes as well. Um, opinions, on the other hand, don't require as many questions because there's not any scales involved. So opinions are almost never using scales and they require far fewer questions. So measuring the scale you use in order to measure an attitude needs to be validated. So this is one of the major take-home points for this particular discussion, is that the scale that you choose to use in order to measure someone's attitude should 99% of the time come from another study that has looked at similar research questions and used similar scales. So what you don't want to do is create your own scale. If you have to, you can, but, but truthfully, you should probably stay away from creating your own scale and use a scale that has been validated previously and from other, other studies. And the easy way of doing that is by looking at the literature, F simply looking up previous studies that have looked at a similar research question to see what kind of scale that they've used, and just taking that scale. One common scale used is a Likert scale. A Likert scale is probably not only a common scale, but probably the most common scale in all of social sciences. Likert, uh, the, the, the Rensis Likert actually devi devised this scale, and he used it to uh, ask respondents about their level of agreement with a, with a specific statement. But just so you know, there's a lot of scales that look like Likert scales, but the only true Likert scale will be a scale that has strongly disagree, disagree, agree and strongly agree. The neutral category, you can take it or leave it. We'll, we'll get more into that in a minute here. But truthfully, a Likert scale is only a scale that includes those four items. Strongly disagree, disagree, agree, and strongly agree. And they have to be ordered in such a way that they reflect the level of agreement. Likert items really ask a respondent's level of agreement on only one statement. So you want to make sure that you, can avoid, you avoid double barreled questions. For example, I like statistics, and I see how they can be applied in my field. So you're really asking two questions in one, right? You're asking, I like statistics, strongly disagree, disagree, agree, or strongly agree. And you're also asking uh, the statement, I see how they can be applied in my field. Uh, clearly, these are two different questions that may have two different answers. So you should ask them in two different questions and not combined in one. So back to the neutral scale, the, the neutral category. The neutral category, like I said, is, is a take it or leave it category. Now, it's very important to understand why it, 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 it can be included and not included. The people who answer in this particular question, marijuana should be made legal, the people who answer neutral could be a number of types of people, a number of different groups. They could be people who are truly neutral about the issue. They just are totally ambivalent about marijuana's legalization in California. They do not know enough about the issue to form an opinion, which is possible. They just they don't really even thought about it, so they don't have an opinion to form because they don't know enough. Or they could be people who don't re want to reveal their true opinion for whatever reason. They're afraid that. Uh, by reviewing their true opinion, it's going to find there. Someone's going to find out that they actually believe that marijuana should be legal, and so on. So you want to be careful when you're including a neutral category because it can actually give a little bit of uh, artificial results. It's a little bit different neutral category. It's a little bit different than a don't know. So a, a don't know is someone who does not know enough about the issue to have an opinion. A neutral category specifically is someone who again does not know about the issue enough to really give a positive or a negative opinion about it. 
Um, a lot of times neutral and don't know, as previously stated, are combined. Uh, and just, it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. So if you're truly interested in knowing the difference between somebody, uh, the, the difference between somebody who doesn't know enough about the issue and someone who knows about the, who knows about the issue but does not have a positive opinion about it either way, you should probably include both don't know, don't know and a neutral category. If you include neutral and don't include don't know, you may have an artificial number of neutral answers for people who really just don't know. And the don't know option should be separate from other options, just like the neutral as well. So it's all about what exactly you're hoping to accomplish with your research question. So when you're trying to figure out what kind of scale to use and you find that the scale you want to use, you just can't find it anywhere. No one's ever, ever used a scale for your research question. Uh, only then should you really try to create your own. And if you create your own, then you have to be very vigilant about creating it accurately and appropriately. For example, here is a, an, a, an example of a scale that uh, a guy named Rosenberg created, and he was looking at uh, adolescent self-image. So we asked these questions, I think there's, let's say, 12 questions, there are 10 or 12 questions here on uh, self-esteem. And I put asterisks next to some of these questions because these questions are actually negative questions, whereas the ones without asterisks are positive questions. For example, on the whole, I am satisfied with myself. But here it says, at times, I think I am no good at all. And that has an asterisk. I put the asterisk myself only to point those out for you. My point here is that if you look down the columns, he has strongly agree, agree, disagree, and strongly disagree. This scale has been validated, and it's a very well-designed survey uh, scale. Because if someone were to go through and not want to spend too much time on the survey and just simply go down the line of strongly agree or down the line of strongly agree and just circle all the answers, we would know right away when analyzing the data that they weren't being truthful. Because simply looking at the first two questions, on the whole, I am satisfied with myself. I put strongly agree. And at times, I think I'm no good at all. I put agree. It... Again, it doesn't, these, these don't re reconcile each other, right? So it doesn't make any sense why somebody would sometimes feel good at all, uh, good about, not feel good about themselves, but um, feel like they're a person of worth. So um, it's a way of sort of checking internal validity of a, uh, of a respondent. You want to make some statements favorable and some unfavorable, just like I pointed out, some negative and positive response. Um, this, some respondents may actually just try to fill in one option for all items. So this, this sort of discourages that from happening. Another thing you want to be aware of is that when you create hypothetical situations, you, uh, you, you can create them to measure attitudes. And here's a good example. Suppose Republicans gain control of the Senate in 2014. This is a hypothetical, hypothetical situation because it's not 2014 yet. We don't know if they're going to gain control or not of the Senate. So you can ask this question and ask them, uh, the respondents, what their opinions are, or their, I'm sorry, their attitudes about the situation, the political climate. Will diplomatic relations with China deteriorate? Strongly disagree, disagree, agree, strongly agree. Medicare, as we know it, would disappear. Strongly agree, or strongly disagree, disagree, agree, and strongly agree. However, hypothetical situations measuring attitudes, you are want to make sure that they are truly hypothetical and not measuring real situations. So you might think that this question is a hypothetical situation, but it actually might be a true situation for the respondent that you're asking. So suppose you discover your partner is cheating on you. You don't know about your respondent's personal life, but this respondent may have actually had a partner cheating on you, or cheating on them. So the, the point is, make sure that your, quote, hypothetical situation is, in fact, a hypothetical situation. Um, interestingly enough, these two questions are, um, suppose your partner is cheating on you, I would forgive him or her, strongly disagree, disagree, agree, I strongly agree, or I would do anything in my power to ruin his or her life. Strongly disagree, disagree, agree, I strongly agree.
So you want to really make sure that your questions and your answers are clearly indicating a favorable or unfavorable position. In other words, you do not have any sort of ambiguity in the response. So for example, consider an example where you have uh, created a scale of tolerance for homosexuality. And you, you ask the question, you, you make the statement, suppose you find out that your child's first grade instructor is gay. And the two responses are, I would faint, strongly disagree, disagree, agree, strongly agree, or I would feel sad, strongly disagree, disagree, agree, strongly agree. The problem with that is, I don't know what I would faint means, or I would feel sad truly means. I would faint, or I would feel sad, would seem to mean that you're not in favor of your child's first grade instructor being gay, but I'm not positive. So maybe a better uh, position would be, or a question would be, suppose you find out your child's first grade instructor, instructor is gay, and you would say, uh, I would remove my child from that class, or I would support my first grade, child's first grade instructor wholeheartedly. Something along those lines. Something that's much more clear and not as ambiguous as these questions are here. Another good idea is to combine your questions into a matrix, just like this. There's not anything added here except the simplicity of having multiple questions in one uh, box. Essentially, here I have, besides each statement presented below, please indicate whether you strongly agree, ad agree, disagree, or strongly disagree. And uh, also notice there's an undecided category, which could be neutral or don't know. It's sort of the uh, extra category that we'll discuss in a second. But all you need to do here is just say, what's this country, what this country needs is more law and order. The police should be disarmed in America or during riots, looters should be shot on sight. So we have three different questions, and they can be all answered with the same scale. Notice, however, again, the two are positive and one is negative, or one is uh, positive and two are negative, it, it, depending on your interpretation of the question. Nevertheless, you can't go down the same column and answer all the questions the same and have them be, you know, reconcile each other. Notice the undecided uh, option here, instead of a neutral, um, undecided is perfectly fine uh, as, as well as neutral here. And um, instead of putting it in the middle, uh, we've chose to put it at the end because it really isn't in the middle. I mean, if you think about it, strongly agree all the way to strongly disagree implies there's some sort of linear response here. Whereas undecided wouldn't necessarily be in the middle and we put it on the outside that, so that it can be interpreted differently. It's really, uh, uh, I, would, I would say, more of an aesthetic thing. One very, very important aspect about Likert scales and Likert items is that you really should not ever combine a Likert scale with other scales. Never. Ever. So, for example, the current budget crisis has affected the quality of my education. Circle one. And you have strongly agree. 10, 9, all the way down to 1, and then strongly disagree. Now I understand what the question is getting at, but combining a Likert item, strongly agree, and another Likert item, strongly disagree, with a scale of 10 to 1 will only add confusion to the person doing the analysis, and it, and it does make the interpretability of the response much more difficult. Rather, you might want to do something that's very similar, but different. Using a 10-point scale, for example, where you just simply write high impact, 10 to 1, and no impact. So the budget crisis has affected the quality of my education. High impact, all the way down to no impact. And that's much better to do a scale like that than to combine the Likert scale and with another scale. Here, you also want to make sure that the scales you use for your own question make sense if you're trying to use it for another question. For example, uh, good scales for one question may not be good for others. What is your GPA? Here we have 4.0, it's great. 3.5, it's very good. 3.0, it's good. 2.5 is not bad. 2.0 is average, and then less than 1.0, hard to get anywhere. But if you ask somebody the number of limbs they have, arms or legs, 
4.0, that's good. You have two arms and two legs. Anything less than that, though, bad. So we have bad all the way down to if you have less than one limb, it's hard to get anywhere. So the interesting thing here is that it's on the, on the extremes, on the upper limit and on the lower limit, they're the same. It's great. It's great when you have 4.0, and it's hard to get anywhere when you have less than one. But anything in the between does not match. So good, one good scale for one question does definitely not match a good scale for another. And lastly, Likert items, when you're asking questions to somebody who perhaps doesn't understand the Likert question or even read English very well, you could ask them, how do you feel when there is broccoli for dinner? And just simply give them emoticons. And you have a little circle for very happy or neutral or very sad. Um, and that's very acceptable in, in common surveys nowadays. If you, if you are designing a survey and you don't want to uh, exclude illiterate people, you can do a question just like this.